The growth of soccer in the United States has occurred at an amazing rate in the last three decades. It is estimated that 13 million Americans currently play soccer and over 4 million youth players are registered with U.S. soccer. Among girls, the United States has more registered players than all other countries of the world combined. The benefits of soccer are many, including amazing physical fitness, sportsmanship, self-confidence, discipline, and working together for the common good of the team. Unfortunately, injuries can and do occur. Lower extremity injuries make up between 61 to 81 percent of all soccer injuries, with the knee being involved 10 to 26 percent of the time. Typically, injuries to the knee involve the kneecap or patellofemoral joint and the major ligaments of the knee, most significantly the anterior cruciate ligament or ACL. Of particular focus in sports medicine research over the last decade has been the issue of knee injuries. Specifically, the increased incidence of injuries in females compared to males. Among athletes participating in twisting and pivoting sports, females have been shown to have a two to ten times greater chance than males of injuring their ACL. Proactive Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine is an award-winning company that offers industry-leading rehabilitation services throughout the greater San Diego County. Using the latest techniques, Proactive offers a wide array of services including physical, aquatic, and hand therapies with proven, successful results. Proactive has been the trusted provider of physical therapy for the 14-time professional indoor soccer champions, the San Diego Soccers, for the past six years. With years of experience and knowledge, therapists at Proactive have developed an ACL injury prevention program. Designed to keep players healthy and on the field, this program recognizes the potential for injury and provides the proper intervention to keep athletes strong, injury-free, and playing at their best. My name is Bill Kosick. I'm a licensed physical therapist and certified athletic trainer and director of rehabilitation at Proactive Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Carlsbad, California. Tim Hewitt and a group of his colleagues at Cincinnati Children's Hospital have identified four modifiable factors that have been shown to place female athletes at a greater risk for ACL injury. Today we're going to discuss and demonstrate exercises that address each of those factors. The first modifiable factor that we'll look at is what's called ligament dominance, or the body's inability to control movement of the knees towards each other in the frontal plane during twisting, pivoting, or cutting movements. It's commonly referred to as valgus collapse. Exercises that we like to do to address this include double leg hopping on the shuttle or total gym, performed with an elastic loop around the knees. Also, sidestepping or monster walks performed with the elastic loop help strengthen and train the lateral hip muscles to slow down and minimize valgus collapse. The second modifiable factor that we look at is what's called quadriceps dominance, or the difference between strength and coordination of the muscles on the front of the thigh, the quadriceps, compared to the muscles on the back of the thigh, the hamstrings. Females generally show decreased function of the hamstrings in comparison to males. Exercises to improve hamstring strength and function include various exercises using suspension strap devices, including hamstring concentric and eccentric curls. Similar hamstring training can also be performed using exercise balls or by performing bridging with walkouts. The third modifiable factor that we look at is leg dominance or the imbalance between strength and coordination from one leg to the other. To address this during the exercises, we try to isolate single legs so that one leg cannot compensate for the other. Exercises include single leg hopping drills on the shuttle or total gym, and single leg squats with upper extremity assist. We also like to perform single leg balance drills with some type of challenge, such as limb movements, unstable surfaces, ball tossing, or closed eyes, but not all at the same time. The fourth and last modifiable factor that we look at is what's called trunk dominance. That's the body's inability to provide a stable foundation through the torso. For this, during exercises, what we promote are exercises that will place stresses on the athlete's trunk during different planes of motion. Exercises we find helpful include sideline planks with leg raises, upper extremity ball rollouts, and resisted band exercises emphasizing torso control in the rotary plane of motion. Finally, in order to assess readiness to return to sport, 
proactive therapists use tests and measures shown in recent research to be valid indicators of an athlete's ability to perform safely. The majority of participants in soccer enjoy a healthy, injury-free career. But for those that do suffer injury, proactive PT and sports medicine staff are here to help athletes regain strength, mobility, and function, allowing the quickest and safest return to sport possible. We encourage you to call or stop by our offices today to find out how Proactive can help you stay in the game.